Hi folks, it's John Raffle here and I know a lot of you guys have been concerned for my health. I really appreciate that. I know many of my friends have been praying. Um, those of you who are unfamiliar with prayer, I know that I have been in your thoughts. My family has been in your thoughts and I do really appreciate that. Um, and the back history on this is that the beginning of January, I got a diagnosis of breast cancer. And so since um, February through to now August the 2nd, I've had two operations and another procedure to um, try to see where I'm at. And yesterday was my first day of chemotherapy. And I want to make uh, these uh, short remarks for those of you that perhaps are facing chemotherapy or have had a diagnosis of cancer and you are um, quite understandably concerned and apprehensive, perhaps fearful of what lies ahead. And perhaps let's just start with the first thing, and that is that, you know, when I first heard of a pick line being put in your arm. This is my pick line. Now, it looks a bit scary if you just see it without any explanation, admittedly. But I thought, oh my gosh, what's a pick line? And then the nurse told me last week that it means inserting a tube up an archery and then a tube goes up to one of the main heart arteries. Now, that's sort of a scary thing to be told and but there's a reason for it and the reason for it is so that you know those of you that have been in hospital do now you know they're forever taking blood samples and sometimes and at one point I had six blood samples taken on one day and every time a blood sample is taken a new appointment they are making an appointment in your skin with a syringe and so, or whatever they call it, I don't even know. But anyway, um, to avoid that, the pick line, uh, because the pick line stays in for typically uh, three sets of three doses of chemo. So you're looking at around five months. Again, that's a bit of a scary prospect. I didn't know this. This time last week, I did not know this. I'm not a medic. I'm not a teacher. I'm talking to you as a patient. And so the prospect over the weekend of coming in Monday to Queen Elizabeth Hospital and getting this pick line inserted that would be in there for five months and it has to be dressed by a nurse every week and then chemo every three weeks yeah that is daunting and i really really get that folks now those of you who have listened to any of my other videos i don't know if they're up there or there <laughs> they're there anyway <laughs> subscribe to the channel please guys because that's when you get this uh hopefully these words of encouragement from me and those of you who watch my videos know that i'm um, a person of faith that my compass in life has since I was 20 years old, 50 years ago, my compass has been set to follow Jesus Christ. Yeah, and that compass has wavered here and there, but for, the Holy Spirit always brings that compass back to his glory, his honor. And he picks us up when we make mistakes, when we fall, and we continue on that focus of discipleship. You know that. Um, but I also want to be real, because some people have said, oh, you've kind of like, on some of your videos, you've not really shared what you're really going through. Now, I really have tried to do that, but I will accept that as fair comment. And um, this weekend, I was apprehensive about this pick line. But I knew also that, um, at least here in the United Kingdom, we have the National Health Service, and they're doing an absolutely fantastic job. 
And I always tell a nurse or a doctor, especially the nurses that come on the ward, and I've had multitudes of them this month. I've been happy this year. I've now got enough appointments each month to qualify me for a free car pass for Kubernetes for Hospital, which I'm eternally grateful for. Um, but I always tell the nurses that, that I'm with, uh, regardless of how, and I've had some student nurses, had a nurse with me yesterday, I was her very first patient. And I'll look in her eyes and I'll say, I trust you. And I do that on purpose because I want her to know that I'm trusting her or him, mostly it's her. But it's because of my trust in God. Um, this student, she's not a student nurse, it was the first time that she'd done this procedure on a patient. And I said, I trust you. And I know she had like a head uh, scarf on, rather like the World War II nurses. And I just thought it was nursing gear. And I said to her, I said, do you love Jesus? And she said, yes. She said, I'm a nun. And so here she is. And then I realized it's a habit, <laughs> which I thought was wonderful. And, um, and I noticed that, you know, the guy sitting next to me, didn't speak a lot of English and he obviously wasn't too aware of what was happening. I was able to have a little bit of a, uh, I, I was only like an hour ahead of him on the journey in a way, but he hadn't got a pig line in and he was very concerned about it. And so he was just getting uh, a line temporarily put in. So I was able to talk to him about pig line. Rather like I'm talking to you that actually, uh, it's not as scary as it sounds, but obviously when I say I trust the nurses, it's because of and through my trust in Jesus, my faith in Jesus, that I'm able to say that. Um, so this dear Indian gentleman sitting in the chair right next to me, I struck up a little bit of a conversation with him. Um, you know, I didn't go straight into a God thing. I just said to him, um, oh, I've got my pig vine and... You know, it's a bit scary at first, isn't it? But um, actually, it's it's a good procedure, and you know you won't feel pain or anything, which is true. And then at the end, I said, "My son, my six-year-old son Luke, if he were here with you, he would want to give you one of these leaflets. God loves you." And he was so happy to receive it, and he picked it up and took a look, and then put it uh, in his bag to read later. Um, I find these tracks absolutely amazing, by the way, leaflets. This is great. So, yeah, um, um, then I had something. I'll, I'll finish on the next video. I'm going to tell you something really exciting that happened yesterday, okay? So stay tuned. Watch the next video. Thanks. This is John Ruffle, and it's 2nd of August, and this is I've not slept. I've slept two hours in the last 24, 25, 26. In the last 27 hours, I've only slept an hour and a half because they give you this uh, hormone stuff. Is it hormone stuff? I can't even remember what it's called. And uh, it just, it, I don't like it. I like to get my sleep and get up and be really focused in the morning. I'm not even allowed to have any coffee yet. So that's me for now. John Ruffle, and uh, oh, I should end with with a with a little prayer for you because um, I know that some of you have had very hard diagnosis given to you, and there's no way I'm going to make light of that. So you know, I'm just going to pray in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father. I come to you and I bring to you those precious ones watching and those who are known to us who are undergoing chemotherapy and those, Lord, who have been told the thing that no one wants to hear, that you've only got X number of months to live. I want to lift up those souls through right now. And I command the spirit of death to leave in Jesus' name. And Heavenly Father, I pray that your healing touch 
be upon those individuals and that they will not check out of this life one second, one breath before you call time for them. I pray, Lord, encourage them, strengthen their faith. And faith, Lord, let us remind ourselves, is simply resting in God's promises, resting in your love and mercy and your healing power. Thank you, Lord for hearing us through the merits of Jesus Christ, your only Son, who lives and reigns in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks so much for watching. This is John Ruffle. May you enter into a healing cycle, and may you gain great inner healing from our Lord. Jesus Christ himself personally through his Holy Spirit. God bless you. Thank you. I love you. And Jesus loves you more and more.